The romantic queen, Victoria, knew how to keep love alive in marriage. She and Prince Albert took every opportunity to reward each other. They surrounded themselves with beauty. Art as celebration resulted in a wonderfully dynamic art collection ranging from jewelry to sculpture and superb examples of early Italian painting, including Dottie's Marriage of the Virgin, given to her husband, Prince Albert, in 1848 as a birthday present. The artist, Bernardo Dotti, circa 1280 to 1348, Florence, Italy, created his notebook paper-sized masterpiece, measuring 10 inches by 12 inches in temper on wood, at a time when most artists created huge, wall-sized works. His Florentine workshop was prosperous, and his talent was second only to Giotto. Both artists were credited with the blossoming of early Italian Renaissance painting. Did St. Francis influence the shift from international Gothic ephemeral images of the spirit to the grounded, rounded, vulnerable, solid human forms of the early Renaissance art? Methinks yes, and I'll tell you why. While St. Francis lived and preached during the Gothic period, it took another century before his message was truly assimilated into the hearts and into the art of the people. St. Francis loved to sing to the birds, and one verse from his music says, Praised be my Lord God with all his creatures, and especially our brother the sun, who brings us the day and who brings us the light. St. Francis addressed the common people in their own vernacular in the simplest of terms. Nothing about moaning and wickedness and confounded anguish in this hymn, thank you very much. Certainly St. Francis, who slept in abandoned churches and pilgrimaged in poverty, certainly he would have hiccuped had he foreseen a lavish basilica and monastery erected in his memory. Decoration of churches was bread and butter for artists, and they poured their genius into the project. Fact is, if St. Francis's precept of poverty had been strictly followed, there would have been no money, and no great art movement could have blossomed. Dottie's work is one of the supreme masterpieces in the history of wedding painting because of its jewel-like colors and subtle shading in the spirit of Giotto, who revolutionized painting from flat pattern to solidity. Religious themes were money-makers for artists who seized on the golden legend to better understand the life of Mary and her betrothal. During the 14th century, the golden legend was our equivalent of a bestseller. It was written by Jacobus de Voragine, representing Christ as an infant in arms, began to replace the mature image in divine majesty, so prominent in the Gothic period, and along with the growing interest in the cycles of Christ's infancy, legend of Mary's life became more and more popular with the people. In the marriage of the Virgin, we see a story being told. Suitors were instructed to bring rods to the temple, and once there, whosoever had a rod that burst into flower would marry the Virgin. Joseph had a dove appear and land on his head, and he wanted to refuse to marry the Virgin because he had sons of his own, six in fact. Here is a painting of tenderness, disappointment, humility, rebellion, and obedience. We feel the emotions of the young girl and the old Joseph, as well as the rebellion of the young suitors breaking their twigs across their knees in defeat. The foreground of the painting is simple so that our eye can take in the many faces and personalities. Times outside the walls of Dottie's studio were turbulent indeed. In those days, the Gulf, spelled G-U-E-L-P-H, war, and the Ghibelline Wars were creating a new division of wealth, and the merchants of Siena fought their foes in Florence. It was hard to tell the warriors apart, and they came to distinguish their alliances by wearing a feather in their hats, cocked to the right or to the left. 
In 1230, Florence besieged Siena. The Italian Guelphs were hit by the Florentine Ghibellines who catapulted dung and donkeys over the walls of Siena. Then crops failed and famine swept through Italy. As if that wasn't enough, Dotti and his kinsmen faced the bubonic plague which reduced the population by 50%. The plague claimed the wife of Dotti and his three sons were sent out to a guardian. Since at least one of them would have been expected to continue the legacy of Dottie's studio workshop, we may surmise that they succumbed to death as well. The plague is considered the most devastating pandemic in human history, and DNA research proves that the rats with fleas, who were regular passengers on merchant ships, combined with the practice of dumping garbage in streets, filled with people as well as animals, made Florence and Siena petri dishes of pestilence. Here we have the image of Triumph of Death by Francesco Triani, circa 1350. This work shows suffering, terror, and human waste. A chronicler of Siena, after burying five of his children, said quite simply, No one wept for the dead, because everyone expected death himself. The Marriage of the Virgin is a masterpiece of early Italian Renaissance art, but there could be some mischief afoot concerning the painting. Authorities comment, that nearly all the panels preserved in the Uffizi Gallery in Florence measure 38.5 by 50 centimeters and have rounded tops set in cusped frames. The Marriage of the Virgin, however, has been cut by a substantial amount and is a rectangle measuring only 26 by 31 centimeters. Whatever circumstances liberated the panel into the art market remain a mystery. The painting is housed in the Queen's Gallery at Buckingham Palace. Unfortunately, Prince Albert succumbed to an untimely death, yet it was undoubtedly some consolation to Queen Victoria and a lesson to us all to celebrate life and surround ourselves with love and beauty.